Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with uh, Green Acres Pest Control and this is Emma, my daughter. <laughs> We're here live tonight and uh, it's a little bit of a different, um, what do you call it? It's a format, is that the right word, Emma? What? Yeah, we're doing a little bit of a different format this weekend because I'm out of town uh, visiting some family. But I wanted to come on and, and do a little bit of a live show tonight because I know I usually do a live show on uh, Saturday nights. And this would be my second weekend in a row that we've gone on Saturday nights. A lot of times uh, you can catch me. It's after 10 o'clock on Saturday night. We do a live show about bed bugs, mice, you know, roaches whatever you have any questions about. So we're gonna do it a little bit different tonight. I'm gonna to try this and see how it works. If anybody wants to ask me any questions, you're welcome to it. We're, uh, I'm on my iPad, so I don't know exactly how the chat will work, but you're welcome to ask any questions that you'd like. But uh, tonight I wanna to talk about, uh, I can't remember what it was. I talked to my wife about it on the way uh, up here, but we were gonna talk about uh, bed bugs and uh, why they, Emma, would you, you're making, you know there's other people that are watching this right now. This is my daughter, y'all, by the way. This is Emma. She's having a birthday here in about a week and a half. And so she, we're kind of celebrating her birthday with some family out of town. And my son does uh, Olympic diving. He, uh, junior, junior, <laughs> Emma, people are watching you. Look, see that number right there? That's how many people are watching you right now. People are watching you. And you making silly faces, and they can see you doing it. Do you realize that? So, anyway, y'all let me know if you can or can't hear me. Uh, yeah, it should tell me if you guys chat to me or not. But, um, anyway, yeah, we're out of town. My son, he does uh, uh, dive in Junior Olympics. So, uh, we're out of town for that, and we figured we'd be up here. We would uh, celebrate my daughter's birthday, too, because she'll be five years old in about a week and a half. But, um, anyway... I wanted to talk about uh, why bed bugs have been such a problem here lately and why they've been uh, spreading around. We had talked last weekend. I kind of touched on a little bit about pregnancy and pest control. And if, uh, hey, AJ, yeah. what were we going to talk about? I'm live right now. I can't remember what it was. We were going to talk about some of the reasons that you feel like exterminators are contributing to the bed bugs. Oh, yeah. Uh, why I feel like... Uh, exterminators are contributing to the bed bug problem. Um, there's been, and this is a little bit of a touchy subject because a lot of people disagree with this, but I, I feel like it's something that needs to be addressed. Um, I do a lot of bed bug work. I get a lot of calls on bed bugs. I do it uh, because of my YouTube channel. I do it because of just people call me because I'm an exterminator. And I feel like all the, all the jobs I've gone on, uh, <laughs> The reason this it sparked this about the uh, why I think bed bugs are, uh, you know, the exterminators are contributing to the bed bug problem, is because I did a job this week, uh, Monday Monday or Tuesday of this week, for a lady. She has a, a single wide trailer, and it's you know if you've ever been in a single wide trailer, it's a short trailer. It's not the long trailer. It's got three bedrooms, but you really could probably figure it as about a bedroom and a half. It really is not that much square footage. Oh, excuse you. But um, she had a quote from another exterminator. And now you can't be getting all up on here now. You've got to behave yourself. So she had a quote from another exterminator. And, <laughs> and the other exterminator was going to charge her uh, $4,500 to treat a single wide trailer. Um, it's a local, <laughs> would you stop making faces in the camera? People, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, she's really she's really touching on me here. She's making me hard to, hard to concentrate, really, if you can tell. But um, but anyway, the, the, <laughs> the, um, the, the exterminator had quoted her $4,500. Now this is an 80 plus year old retired woman and they were gonna come in and they were gonna do a heat treatment they were going to treat the uh, trailer with residuals and some exa. They were going to uh, wrap every bed with bed bags, uh, the bed, the mattress, and the box springs on uh, three bedrooms. And they were also going to come in and do a, uh, a dog. They were going to have a dog sniff through to clear the apartment or trailer after they were done to ensure you're really messing with me, Emma. 
to make sure that they were done with, uh, you know, the bed bugs after the treatment. Um, and this was going to run her $4,500. Now, this woman could barely afford $1,000. And I feel like the there's not a reason really to charge that kind of money uh, to somebody who obviously just can't afford it. Um, if you've watched my channel recently, over the last month or so, I started a Patreon server where I, I collect people pay me every month or whatever. And I take the money that I collect from that and I put it towards needy families. That's what I use it for. And I put it towards bed bug sales and stuff like that. So the people that are that need the income, help, assistance, whatever, I can take it and put it towards their job so they can get basically, you know, a free job. If I've got the income there, I take it out, I put it towards their job, and they get a free treatment. Um, this is so people can afford it that can't normally afford bed bug treatments. Um, you know, I, I feel like that, you know, yeah, you need to make a living, and it's not really my place to judge, you know, what you value your workload at, but I feel like $4,500 is a bit much to charge somebody for a, uh, a bed bug treatment. I think that's kind of ridiculous, especially when you take it, it. It took me to do the entire job flipping mattresses, flipping box springs. Of course, I do this all the time, but it took me, I think it was like 45 minutes to do the entire job. Um, 45 minutes at $4,500 is, it just seems to me to be uh, really, like I said, the lady couldn't afford it. If it wasn't for people like me who are willing to do the job at a more affordable price, then she would have been paying an arm and a leg. She wouldn't have actually been able to afford to do the job at all. And that's going to, uh, I mean, she's going to go to work, uh, which she does still work. Even though she's 80-some years old, she still has a job. She works. She is going to go to Walmart. She's going to go to, uh, you know, Target. She's going to go to the movies. She's going to go to restaurants. And she's going to spread the bed bugs that she has in her home she's going to spread them around because she's not going to stay at home. She's not going to be a hermit just because she has bed bugs and stay at home. She's going to spread them everywhere. And I feel like the fact that exterminators are charging an arm and a leg in order to deal with this problem and it's making lower income, it's, it's making it impossible for them to be able to afford uh, bed bug treatments. And just because I don't know, I mean... Us exterminators have always had things like termite work to fall back on when it came to, you know, these expensive jobs. You can go and you can price a termite job. You can do a termite job for $1,000. You can do a termite job for $1,300, $1,400, um, maybe even more. I, I think the highest ex uh, termite job ever priced was like 2800 because the house was just gigantic. It just it used, I think we ended up using, oh, I don't even know how many gallons, hundreds of gallons of chemical we ended up having to use to treat the whole house. But, you know, we've always been able to kind of fall back on that as far as, you know, something that, that I felt like it was kind of fair what you charge for something like that. But when it comes to bed bugs, it's really not that difficult to get rid of them. It's mostly a general pest control type plan. And yes, you do have to treat mattresses and box springs and things like that if you're going to do a pest control treatment. But it's something that you can, you can do cheaper you don't have to charge these people an arm and a leg. There are, you know, ways that you can make it more affordable for those people. Have you used, Greg says, have you used Niban? Now, it's going to be harder for me to do a search because I'm out of town right now. Uh, I don't really have an ability to do a search for, say, uh, you know, dusts or anything like that. But, um, and I can't keep my chat up. I don't understand how I can keep my chat up. It's not letting me. But uh, Niban Dust, I've never used it personally. Um, I've used the granules. Um, there is a granule that you can get from them for cockroach control. Um, they're basically boric acid uh, pellets that you can kind of put around, and roaches will eat them, and it will kill them. They're really, really good. They work really well. The Niban, it's Niban... Uh, I can't, I can't remember exactly the name of the chemical. I would be, like I said, I'm, I feel a little bit crippled right now because I can't really look it up because, uh, I'm, I, well, I don't have an ability to look it up. So I don't, at least I don't think so. Cause like I said, my iPad's only going to let me do so much. So I'm sorry, you guys, if, if this is kind of like a spur on the moment 
kind of thing. I did bring my laptop with me to do a live stream, but then I forgot my, my web camera. Um, chiming in from Phoenix, Arizona. Let's kill these friggin' bugs. Come out of... <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you there. Um, I deal with... It, it seems like, well, ever since tax season came in, people are able to afford more bed bug treatments, and so I'm getting a lot of calls, but uh, I actually had a lady tell me the other day who called me for bed bugs. She said if she knew that I was so affordable, she would have called me a long time ago as she would have been able to afford it longer. But she had gotten all these quotes from all these other exterminators, and they were going to charge her thousands of dollars. You know, that's one thing I get a lot of flack for. Uh, I released a video almost two years ago about why heat treatment don't work on bed bugs. And I get a lot of negative comments over there on that video. And one thing about it is that I've gone behind a lot of exterminators who do heat treatments. Now, whether now you can argue whether or not they've done a successful heat treatment or not. Um, you know, that's one of the biggest things people say, well, they just didn't do it right. But I've been behind a lot of people who apparently don't know how to do heat treatments. And that's why I don't support them because they're not... I, I don't see of anybody that's really very... Uh, effective locally. I have not run into really anybody that's done a real effective heat treatment. Um, I have a lot of people that complain that don't hire me that complain that the heat treatments aren't successful. Um, it's it's a real it's a it's a shame, but that's just the way it is. I mean that's the way it is at least locally for me. And so I do talk really pretty bad about heat treatments. Now if you do heat treatments and you're successful, that that's great. You know, I'm one of these people that I just think that you know whatever way kills them, kill them. Uh, crossfire alone or crossfire followed by 10 to 14 days later, followed by Alpine. Um, what I do, uh, sorry, I got to read these really quick because they come up really fast for me. Um, I do, if I do Alpine, I do that with crossfire. So what I do is I'll do a, not WSG, but Alpine dust. I'll do a uh, crossfire job. I'll treat mattresses, box springs, and everything. Of course, as the label says, pretty much anywhere bed bugs are. And then I will take and open the outlet covers and places that you can't spray with uh, crossfire and I will dust in the wall with alpine which is exact same thing it's the same active ingredients in the dust that's in the uh, well it's a little different but it's almost the same ingredient as far as the neonicotinoids it's exactly the same in the dusts and I will dust the wall voids with alpine dust and that's very successful for bed bug treatments uh yeah we're thinking of dusting weep holes in IBAN FC because it's a bait maybe one three weep Sorry, it's really hard. I, don't, I wish I knew how to bring and my, leave my chat open. I really need to figure out how to leave my chat open. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I feel really crippled here. Like, I need to... Let me see if I got my... If I get my phone here, maybe I can bring the chat up alongside. Because that would help a lot, wouldn't it? Let me see here. So tonight I just discovered Snapchat and I've been sending all kinds of crazy pictures to my wife using Snapchat. <laughs> um, I don't do, I, I don't know if I had talked to you about this before, Greg, but I don't really promote monthly. I mean, if you can get rid of German cockroaches in a month, you're doing something. I mean, in a, in a quarterly service, because I've never been able to get rid of German roaches on a quarterly service. Um, now, dusting quarterly, uh, that would probably be successful because dust lasts longer as far as residual. It lasts a lot longer than a, uh, a pesticide, but I'm much, I have much better success with German cockroaches if I, um, if I do a monthly pest control for German cockroaches. Greg but, just said it's not German, it's American yeah, Asian. I see it. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, a brown banded too. Even they're they're almost as bad as Germans, but um. So you've got the chat open. I just then. pulled the chat open. Yeah. Okay. If you want me to watch it for you. Yeah, I got it. Okay. There we go. Oh wow, I got a lot of chats here. Okay. Let's see. Wow, I'm I'm really messing up my camera here. Let me see. I wonder if I can set this up with a kickstand. Let me see here. I'm in bed. Sorry, guys. Perfect. Wonderful. All right. Awesome. Okay, so, now I can read my chat and I can talk and everything at the same time. Um, all right, so let's scroll back up here. Nyband FG Dust. Now that, I'm not really sure, 
what the FG dust is. Um, I'll, I can look that up for you later, Greg, when I'm not live, and I can probably give you a message. I can send you a message um, about what I think about it or not. I, like I said, when I'm able to pull up the, um, the actual label, if I know what's in it, I find that if I know what's in something, I can usually make a better assumption as to how well it works or not, because at least here... Here, we're dealing with a lot of resistances, and normally with pesticide resistances, if I read a label and I see that it's something that I know that they build a resistance up pretty quick, then I usually don't recommend it. Um, your thoughts on JT Eaton Bed Bug Plus? Um, bed Bug Plus, I'm not sure. Um, here's that dust. Oh, wow. Man, you're helping me here. Cockroaches, crickets, let's see. I have no idea what that is. Well, if you're getting good results, let me know, because I'd like to know if that stuff works well or not. Um, man, I need to... I see it. Active ingredient on yeah, I see it. I see it. It's orthobor... It's boric acid. That probably works really well. That probably works really, really well. That's the stuff. Yeah, that's the FG... Gra I know exactly what that stuff is. I've used that. I've used that a lot. It's really, really successful. Yeah, I like that. That's something they can't build a resistance to. So the Niban FG granules is really good stuff. I would definitely use that at least every three months yeah even more often if you want to um but the uh bed bug plus i'm not sure what that is i'd need to look into that the jt eaton you want to look that up for me what is it it's jt eaton e-a-t-o-n bed bug plus uh cinema and crossfire is what we use for bed bugs that's great mark yeah you probably how are you doing on your uh results mark are you finding that you're able to get rid of the bed bugs well doing that because i think that's a really good combination um, I always tell people if you're going to use a dust to always use um, Crossfire with it. The Crossfire is really successful. Um, I'm not going to say that. He Hebe? Hebe? Kickenberg? I, I hope I got that right. Uh, FG Fine Gradual. I use uh, it in... It looks like it's an aerosol that it says it combines pyrethrins and... Pyrobutanol butoxide. Can't say that. Pyrobutanol butoxide. Yeah. Yeah, that probably will work on bed bugs. Um, Jabron Fuller, your thoughts on JT Eaton Bed Bug Plus? That probably does work well on bed bugs, except it's an aerosol, and aerosols don't usually last very long. Um, but I find that pyrobutanol butoxide is really good. It's what's the, uh, it's one of the main ingredients in uh, Zenprox, which is labeled for bed bugs, and it does kill bed bugs really well. Um, this is that Tucker from Texas you helped. I didn't take any bed bugs home. Your advice with the Ziploc bags and dryers helped. Oh, good, good, Hunter. Yeah, I remember talking to you. I remember talking to you about the, uh, uh, yeah, I remember. I remember that conversation that we had. Um, Mark says it works great using the Semexin Crossfire. Yes, that's Crossfire's, I, wonder, I love Crossfire. Um... Yeah, but boric acid is really good because they can't they can't build an immunity to boric acid. Boric acid works really well. Uh, yeah, I knew it was Semexa. I knew Mark that it was Semexa. But um, you can also use boric acid dust. You can dust areas really finely. What do you? Th what's your thoughts about onslaught? Look up onslaught for me because I've I've told people about that before. I know I, I used to know what was in it, but I don't think it's a very I think that's a two-week residual where you have to apply it every 14 days, if I can remember correctly, onslaught. My daughter is awake. If y'all saw the beginning of this video, she was right up on the video. <laughs> uh, man, where were you guys last weekend? I was at home last weekend. I'm here, and I'm crippled with this awful iPad trying to do a live stream, and there's, everybody wants to be on here tonight. I got 10 people watching tonight. <laughs> and then nobody was here last weekend when I was talking about pregnant why pesticide why you need to be careful around pregnant women uh, did you find it yeah I just found the label I'm not seeing the ingredients yet oh here we go there's the active ingredients okay onslaught let's see here Kills for up to 12 months. It has. I have no idea what that is. 
It's got a year residual? Kills German roaches for up to 12 months on indoor unsealed concrete and or cement surfaces only. Well, so what does that mean? All right. All right, so, so explain this to me. I'm reading the label. Oh, wow, that's really awful, isn't it? Um, it says here that Onslaught kills for up to 12 months, which is one year in parentheses, like I didn't know 12 months were in a year, kills German cockroaches for up to 12 months on indoor, unsealed concrete and or cement surfaces only. Now, I have never used Onslaught, so you'd have to explain that to me. So does that mean if they got hardwood floors, it's not going to work? No, no, it's not. It says here that... Well, Emma, since you're sleeping in the same room with us, you can stay up as long as I'm on the live stream. So you guys understand you're keeping my daughter up. <laughs> oh, no, I'm <laughs> She's wound up on, She's wound up on chocolate. Her birthday party. Yeah, I know. It's her birthday. She's having her birthday party this weekend. And we went to a... Uh, if you've ever been to D.C., uh, we're actually up in Falls Church today. And they've got a... Uh, a bakery right in Falls Church that makes the best cupcakes in the world. It's right there with Target and everything else. And we went and got her a uh, what kind of cho it was a cupcake and, and a chocolate, chocolate cake, cake like a, miniature one. a miniature volcanic chocolate cake. And that was, I don't know why we had to get her two cakes, but we got her two cakes. <laughs> and then uh, we took her to Target with the family and everybody. And her bought her some summer clothes and everything because she needs her summer outfits because she's growing up. And, uh, yeah, so she's wound up. Yeah, we went out to eat with grandma. grandma and everybody. Grandma and grandpa and great grandma. Let's see here. And she found out what she's having for it, it, Oh, yeah, and, and uh, just so you guys know, if you don't follow me on Facebook, I've... Uh, I've been doing the Facebook uh, people, but I'm doing the different things because my wife is pregnant. For everybody that doesn't know, I did uh, tell everybody a couple streams ago that my wife's pregnant and she's due in September. And we had uh, a gender reveal this weekend with the kids. We went and did a uh, treasure hunt through the house and we put little clues around in different places where they would go like here and there and and all over to find this treasure chest that was full of chocolate, of course, chocolate coins. And then we took in the very bottom, we hit a little blue uh, coin because we found out we were having a boy. And so uh, they were running all around the house trying to find these clues and stuff. So they've had a whole bunch of chocolate candy, too. So is your kid an attack helicopter? <laughs> no. The thing is, I have to wait until they're born, and then I'm just going to ask the child when they're born what gender they're going to be there, Greg. Because um, <laughs> I figured the child's the only one's going to know what gender they are when they're born. Um, Aaron, bed bugs, thoroughly clean sanitized mattresses, box string, treat mattresses, box springs with an approved pesticide such as uh, perethrin aerosol, apply on salt as a spot treatment to potential harborage sites, and migration paths, crack crevices around baseboards, floorboards, headboards, and walls. Well, see, what I do, Aaron, is I use uh, Crossfire on the mattresses because, like you said, you have to use an approved ma uh, pesticide. The reason that I use Crossfire is because it's pr approved to actually be used on the mattress itself, and it's one of the very few chemicals that actually can be used on the mattress that actually works. And so I use Crossfire all over the mattress, inside the box spring. I take the piece of felt off the box spring, and I treat around all the staples. I treat all up inside the box spring, on the wood frame. Uh, if there's springs inside it, I treat those and everything. All that stuff gets treated because those are the places the bed bugs like to live, in the bed. I treat the bed uh, rails. I treat the, where the uh, bed frame attaches to the headboard and the footboard. I treat the footboard and the headboard. I actually had a customer who, the, the last job I just did, they had a footboard that had a, um, an upholstered cover on the headboard. And what it was is it was actually nailed to the, uh, to the headboard with these little decorative little tacks. 
And around every single tack, there was bed bug droppings all up in the grooves where it connected to the headboard. There were bed bug droppings and live bed bugs and eggs and everything laid there. And so I uh, made it a point to clean those areas and make sure that those areas were really well treated because it was a place that was obviously attractive to bed bugs. Uh, of all the places in there, though, I only found three actual live bed bugs in the entire bed on the entire bed. So it wasn't. I, I didn't really think it was as heavily infested. I think they had been doing a little bit of do-it-yourself at home pest control just to try to get rid of the problem, but they just weren't able to do it because if you know, you know, stuff you buy at Walmart, Home Depot. Places like that, it's really difficult to do a really adequate job getting rid of the bed bugs because of the immunity issues that we're finding with uh, pyrethrins now. Um, they are causing a big problem. The immunity is a big issue with pyrethrins. Um, so, let's see, what is this here? Oh. Oh, you know what? Oh. Uh, well, I think I might send you a message. I, I might get send this guy a message later when I'm off stream. Um. Oh, thank you, D. On the D says congratulations Wait, on the you baby. Tell him what it was? Oh, it's a boy. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Did I tell you? I told y'all I put a blue coin in there, and it was a boy. I well, think I did that. He said a blue coin guy. I guess they would have figured that out, wouldn't they? Well, <laughs> then, well, then Greg asked if the child was an attack helicopter because it just depends on how the, you know, if it's a boy, he probably is going to be an attack helicopter. <laughs> if you know how boys are, I know I was when I was a boy. I'm, I'm I think I'm still a boy. I think at least last time I checked, I was. But um. Anyway, that's what I identify I identify as a, as a boy, as a man. So, uh, for your information, Jason, it usually takes like 30 seconds for you to see comments on your normal streams. iPad, you see it immediately. Well, that's great. That's good. That's good. Everything's immediate. That's good. Uh, what kinds of mirror of materials are bed bugs attracted to? People. Bed bugs are attracted to people, D. Uh, the reason that I treat the bed the way I do is because I am trying to lure the bed bugs to you. Um, doing doing a bed bug treatment, and this is this is one thing that's really attractive to other exterminators. The reason that I treat the beds the way I do with Crossfire is because it requires my wife to stop slapping my daughter's hands and play this game because it's making my mind go crazy trying to listen to this. If you hear this smacking, 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 that's them playing a game over there trying to keep her busy. <sighs> anyway, this is the most difficult live stream I think I've ever done, y'all. I'm really sorry. Uh, so anyway, what what's going on? What was I saying? Oh, you treat the people as baits because that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Accident. Yeah. So so people naturally will attract bed bugs. So what I do is I treat the mattress, the box spring, headboard, footboard, the bed, the the, the baseboards. And that's all. I don't require my customers take and empty out the drawers to their dressers or their nightstands. I don't make people take stuff and bag it up and put it in the middle of the floor or anything like that. I leave everything like it is. Now, I will might, might ask people to kind of move stuff away from the wall so I can do real well next to the baseboards. I treat baseboards, crown molding, windows, uh, any cracks around the windows, any uh, cracks around, uh, you know, the, the door door molding and stuff like that, places that the bed bugs hide into. If you've ever been on a really bad bed bug job, you've seen them hide in all these places. Um, so, and the reason that I do it that way, and a lot of my customers will ask me, they'll say, well, how are you going to get the bed bugs that are in the boxes under my bed? Or how are you going to take care of the bed bugs that are uh, in the boxes I've stored in these rooms? And I know there's got to be bed bugs in them because I have bed bugs really bad. And the bed bugs probably are in these places. And what I tell them is I say, well, you know, the thing is, bed bugs are going to be naturally attracted to you when you sleep at night. So as long as you treat the bed and the box spring and the bed, the, uh, the legs of the bed, everywhere the bed bugs could possibly crawl into the bed to bite you, they're going to die. And if you set it up on like a monthly thing where you're coming once a month for two or three months, they're not going to be able to resist a free meal forever. They're going to come. They're going to try to bite you. And when they do, when they come out of those boxes, when they come out of your furniture, when they come out of your dressers and your chest of drawers, they're going to crawl up the bed legs. They're going to crawl up the bed frame. They're going to crawl to get to you. And when they do, they've crawled over a treated surface. That's a residual because Crossfire has a 30-day residual, and it kills them. Uh, Hebe, Hebe, I call you Hebe. I'm going to call you Hebe. Hebe Jeebies. You probably give the bugs a Hebe Jeebies. Um, I use a midacloprid 
beta cyflutherin in an aerosol machine, and I dust with delta methrin and ortheoboric acid, which boric acid. Most of the time, there are no bed bugs left by my second treatment. Yeah, see, I'm finding that with even Crossfire. Um, after the second treatment, I hardly ever find bed bugs. The only time that I find bed bugs after the second treatment of Crossfire is what uh, the bed bugs may be coming from a outside source. Like um, one guy I did a job for, I'm pretty positive they were coming from the school system, um, where his kids were bringing them home in the book bags from school. Uh, evidently, the lockers are what I believe the lockers are infested with bed bugs just because they're sitting right side by side by side by side. And the lockers do get infested with bed bugs. Um, and uh, there was another lady that I did a job for who's she had an estranged son in law, and they were bickering back and forth, her daughter and her ex son in law, arguing over the kids. And so the kids were going back and forth and back and forth between the dad and the mom, which the mother was living with the, uh, the mother in law now. And so the, the mother and daughter were living together, and the kids were coming in. They were bringing bed bugs from the father's house. Um, usually, that's all I find. If it's after the second treatment, and they're still having bed bugs, it's usually because they're coming from an outside source. Uh, family members um, are really normally most of the time they are the cause. But in this this one family that I just recently did, they were bringing them from the school system. So you can bring them from schools. The schools are getting infested with bed bugs. So uh, keep that in mind too. But yeah, that's 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 about what I'm getting to. And uh, like I said, I'm only using the crossfire and uh, dusting occasionally. Now I don't dust every job. You know, if if the job's not heavily infested, I usually don't dust. But you know, dusting is something that will last a lot longer. You can do dust. I've noticed the last few jobs I have just dusted, just because it does last for three or four months anyway. The residual's a lot longer with a dust as long as you don't get it wet. Um, I like alpine dust because it's, it's alpine, which is, I'm not going to try to, it's a D, D word, dino something. It's a, uh, synthetic, it's not a synthetic pre -pour. It's a neonicotinoid, but it's also got, uh, uh, diatomaceous earth mixed in. So, um, and I personally, I just feel that diatomaceous earth works better. There you go, Greg. Thank you. Um, but that's, that's what I've been using in, uh, in my dusts in the walls and stuff. Uh, yeah, the chemical controls are fairly simple. It's the cultural issue that are harder to manage. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, that's like I was saying earlier, that gets back to my point, is I understand that it's a lot of work doing a bed bug job. I know that, I mean, I get into it, I know it's a lot of work. And there are some jobs I've been in where I feel like I've really underpriced myself, where it's just so much work. And I'm sore for days because of, you know, lifting mattresses and box springs and everything. But it's really important that we try to figure out a way to make these jobs more affordable for people in lower income housing. Because I really think that that's causing a lot of the problem. Um, I, just, I just had this conversation with someone not too long ago about a, uh, a sofa. Uh, a lady got a used sofa um, for free. And I'm like, you know, you have to you have to think about that before you go and bring something like that in your house, because while it may be nice and it may be great sofa and and it looks great, there's a reason people are getting rid of it. Why are they getting rid of the sofa? What's wrong with the sofa? You know, you drive down the side of the road and you'll look out on the side of the road and you'll say, well, that sofa looks great. That's a perfect sofa. Why is somebody throwing such a great sofa away? I'm bringing the truck by here and I'm going to throw it on the back of the truck, take it home, put it in my living room. You get it home and you find bed bugs all over it or cockroaches, you know, and, and you've brought them in your house. And a lot of the lower income families, because they can't afford the furniture, they pick these mattresses up off the side of the road. They pick these. Uh, I did a bed bug job one time for a lady. And uh, the bed bugs, it was a really old, heavy leather couch. It was a nice leather couch. You could say it was uh, borderline antique, but it was a really nice leather couch. And she said within the first five hours of it sitting out on the curb for the junk truck to pick it up, somebody came by in a pickup truck and took it home with them. And it was full of bed bugs. And, you know people see that stuff sitting out on the curb and they take it home because they like a nice couch. And it was a nice couch, but it was full of bed bugs. Wait, and in, wait, someone got a mattress from their family. 
Oh, yeah. And a family or friend, maybe it's a friend, and they didn't tell them. Right. That they had bed bugs. Right, right. Friends and family will give you a free mattress, and it's got bed bugs on it. Uh, D says, bed bugs bite during the day, too. I work nights. Oh, yeah, that's true. See, what will happen, D, is typically what bed bugs will do is they will feed between 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning. That's when you're in the deepest part of your sleep. Typically, most people are in REM sleep or they're in just that dead of the sleep. They're just really tired. They're, they're asleep. And there's a period during everyone's sleep cycles where they'll go completely paralyzed. The body will paralyze them naturally, and they'll be asleep. And they won't wake up. And the bed bugs will come out, crawl out, and bite you. And usually that's between 2 and 4 in the morning. But if you work a night shift and you're coming home and you're sleeping during the day, the bed bugs will change their feeding habits and they will start biting you during the day because that's when they get their blood meal. They don't like movement. They're afraid of people. They don't like to crawl out on you if you are awake. They want to bite you when you're asleep because they feel safe. They can come out. They can bite you. If you've ever actually seen a bed bug move after it's fully engorged itself on blood, they're really crippled and they need to be able to get away and they move kind of slow and sluggish because they're full. And so they need to be able to bite you when you're asleep, when you're really good and asleep. Now, they will bite you on a couch, too. They'll get on you because, um, you know, you may be sitting there watching a TV show and you don't feel it because they do have a uh, numbing agent in their saliva that causes them to be able to bite you where you can't feel it. And so a lot of times you don't itch until after they've already bitten and gone off of you. Um, Hebe says, I bought a Stearns and foster mattress two years ago from a nice household. The mattress sold new for 1700 I got it for 300 and found bed bugs on it when I got home. Luckily, I'm in pest control. Yeah, that's right. Well, see, here, here's the thing. <clears throat> Let me tell you this now. We're having this new baby, and my wife has got this thing for Facebook. They've got this new feature on Facebook. I don't know if very many people know about it or not or if you've checked it, but they've got a marketplace where you can scroll through the pictures of what people are selling. And she's wanting to get a baby bed. Um, and I told her, hell no. Actually, that's exactly what I did. Didn't I say hell no? I did. I said hell no. You said everything we're yeah. going to buy new. I said we're going to buy new stuff. I said I would rather, even though I'm in pest control, I just don't want to deal with the crap. I have to deal with it every day. I got to go to people's houses and deal with their bed bugs. I don't want to bring bed bugs in my house. I, I'd rather not. I'd rather just not. I just don't want it. I just don't want it. Um, Greg says, I've never experienced sleep paralysis. Has anyone experienced it? I hear it's really scary. Well, no, it's normal. Now, there are some people, Greg, that will wake up during it, and they're still paralyzed partially, and that's what you said, where you experience sleep paralysis. Normally, if you go through the normal stages of sleep and, and waking up, you'll wake up, and you're not going to be paralyzed anymore. But yeah, that has happened. Yeah, I watched a show about it one time, where people talked about how they stayed in that state, and it does happen sometimes. Uh, what bothers me is that people will sell something like that, knowing that it is full of bedbugs. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that bothers me, you know. But I had a lady, uh, I ha actually had a lady one time called me from um, Charlottesville. Because I do a lot of work in Charlottesville, Virginia. And she called and she's like, you know, I, uh, I'm from Canada. I'm moving back to Canada, and I want to be able to take my mattresses with me, but the Canadian government won't let me bring my mattresses out of, out of the Canadian, um, out of the United States into Canada without treating them with, um, what was that chemical? I can't remember what it was, but it's not legal in America. It's not legal in Virginia. Um, shoot. Maybe you guys can help me if you can remember the name of the chemical. But there's a pesticide that you can use where you can gas... Uh, a lot of times they use it when they tent homes uh, for uh, drywood termites and carpenter ants. But um, in Virginia, they made it illegal to use it for bedding because the uh, with the synthetic fibers that beds are made of now, they will actually lose the chemical um, a lot slower. So where it will tell where they'll tell you to be out of the house for three three days to to six days, something like that, after the treatment is finished. That way, the chemicals completely dissipated. In this certain instance, the, the chemical, they had been out for over a week, and they came back in. It was safe for, I mean, as far as the pest control, you know, it was completely safe for them to come back in the house. And they went to bed in the house, and the husband woke up in the middle of the night having convulsions and seizures from this chemical that these beds were treated with. 
but it was the whole house that was treated as what, what was going on for uh, termites. And they actually ended up dying in the uh, ambulance on the way to the hospital. And that was in the state of Virginia. Um, oh, I thought that was in Florida. That was in Virginia. Okay. No, that was in Virginia. I actually remember when it happened. And uh, they died in the hospital. Am, are you licensed in multiple states? I think I remember you telling us people call you from other states. People call me from other states all the time. And, but no, I'm only licensed in Virginia. People call me from all over the world. I've had people call from New Zealand before. I had a lady call me from Spain, Spain, New Zealand, um, Hawaii. Yeah, the person from Spain we sold to because she owned the house. Yeah, that's right, because she lived in Charlottesville. But the, it was Spain. She found me in Spain on the internet. Um, she, New Zealand. Uh, all over Canada. People from Canada call me all the time. Um, but that's the thing when you get on YouTube is YouTube is worldwide and people find you all over the world, especially if you start talking about bed bugs that really, really plague everywhere. If someone is moving from the U.S. to Canada and they have a bed bug infestation, they're very likely to bring them along, whether or not they bring the mattresses, those things to get in there. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But the problem is, is that Canada said that unless these mattresses are treated with this specific pesticide, they are not allowed to bring their mattresses back into Canada. And the thing is, in Virginia, now, there are other states that have adopted this law as well. It is against the law to treat a house with this certain pesticide. Man, I wish I could remember the name of the pesticide. That's going to bother me so bad now. Yeah. I, was, I talk about it to other people all the time, but I can't remember the name. It's late. I'm tired. But anyway, the, um, man, I wish I could remember what it was called. But anyway, yeah, that you could bring them in nightstands, furniture, anything. You could bring them in anything. But, um, and it was just the mattress and box spring. You could still bring your bed rails. Bed bugs live right on the bed rails. But, um, I told her, I said, the reason that law is in place in Canada is because it's against the law in most of the, of the states in the union. They won't allow you to do that because people were dying from the chemical. It was killing people. And so, in fact, if you need to treat a house for like carpenter ants or drywood termites, they actually have to remove all the bedding, uh, sofas, mattresses. Uh, cushions, pillows, anything like that has to be pulled out of the house before they can even treat the house. Because, like I said, because people were dying, it's not worth dying over. You know, it's just termites. It, that's not worth dying over. Um, so, but anyway, I mean, yeah, I've had people call me from all over the world, Greg. It's it's interesting talking to the different people that contact me. You've uh, to do you ever watch Brave Wilderness? It's like the new version of Steve Irwin. The guy lets insects sting him like the bullet ant, tarantula hawk, and a couple others, the tarantula hawk paralyzed his arm. Now, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that, but I've never watched it. I'm going to have to watch what it. What is it called? Um, it's called Brave Wilderness. You ought to write that down. We we'll go watch it. Watch what is it on? Is it like a Netflix thing? or? No, it's not methyl bromide. I um, thought it began with a P. Did no. It? No, I think it's a V. It's not Vapona, but it's... uh. I can't remember. I can't remember. The Vapona is something that works really well on bed bugs, and it's in uh, Nyban strips. Uh, it's labeled for it? Nyban strips are labeled for bed bugs. Mm. Oh, it's a YouTube channel. He said it's a YouTube channel. I'll watch it. Oh, yeah. I'm a YouTube person. I like YouTube. I watch YouTube. We had talked about letting you let bugs call on you. Well, I got a... Th uh, all right. So this thing happened to me um, back at New Year's. I reached a thousand subscribers. I've since surpassed. I'm like at thirteen something now. Um, I had a thousand subscriber thing where if I got to a thousand subscribers before the new year, I would let bed bugs bite my arm. Now, what I had decided to do was I was thinking about getting a bed bug dog to take with me to do these uh, to like clear apartments and stuff uh, for bed bugs. And in order to properly train your your dog, you have to have uh, bed bugs in order to train the the dog on the scent of the bed bugs to keep them trained and so i was considering buying a vial of bed bugs and letting them bite my arm but i never could find anybody that i could actually get the vial from quick enough to do it or i would have done it well i don't think we quite reached a thousand oh no but... we did oh we did yeah we reached like wow uh, almost it was like 1050 or something by the time new year's actually rolled around so i'm still planning on doing that eventually when i get a chance so, are you looking for that channel now? Oh, no, I was looking for that thing that killed the first. 
do you ever serve do services in Roanoke? I do. I service from Charlottesville all the way to Boone's Mill. So I cover a really large area. You have gone up as far as Culpeper, haven't you? Yeah, I've gone up to Culpeper. Yeah, well, I have Falls Church too. Um, T Bone. People all over the internet are saying to use malathion for bed bugs. Malathion won't kill bed bugs. That's not a bed bug chemical. It's not even. It's not even that effective on bed bugs. I wouldn't advise using malathion on bed bugs. It, it may have been used for bed bugs, but it doesn't really work well on bed bugs. I'm opening a pest control business in Roanoke in like a week. I'm building the website right now. Well, good job. That's great. I didn't realize you were a local in Virginia. <coughs> Where's he at? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Where are you at? My wife wants to know where you where are you located. But he says he's opening a business in, in Roanoke. Roanoke is. Roanoke's a good city for bugs. Yeah. <laughs> the, the biggest problem with Roanoke... And I don't do a lot of business in Roanoke. And the main reason is because the price gouging is so bad out there. It's um, it's it's just exterminators will cut your throat to make, you know, they don't even make anything. They're, they're willing to sell jobs at cost. I mean, I know what the chemicals cost. I know what the time costs. And, um, and unless the customer is willing to pay me for my time, I just don't go out there. And because the competition is so high in Roanoke, I don't do a lot of business in Roanoke. And, and uh, I prefer areas like Charlottesville and, and Lynchburg out that way because the people will actually pay you for your time. They understand that you got to make a living. And uh, But you go to Roanoke, a lot of it's real depressed. You know, the, the city, um, three-quarters of it is just slums. And those people just can't afford pest control. And I just, I just got done talking about how we need to figure out ways to make it affordable for these people. But... You know, I try my best to help people where I can, but I can't do it for free. I can't work for free. <coughs> well, I think people aren't really using what they say they're using either. Well, no, they're not. No, they're not. Um, I used to operate out of Richmond. I'm tired of the city. Yeah, Richmond's rough. I just did a job in Richmond a few weeks ago, actually in Chesapeake, and I stayed in Richmond. And, uh, yeah. I don't think I would like working in Richmond at all. The problem with Richmond is that every road's one way. It's real difficult to get around out there. So, um, for those of you guys just tuning in, uh, this is a, a live stream that I do every Saturday night after 10 o'clock. And uh, I know I'm out of town. It's kind of looks kind of crappy right now the way that everything's set up. I usually sit and do my live stream in my in my living room with the green screen and everything, but I haven't, uh, I'm out of town, and so I tried to do a live stream tonight for everybody, answers a few questions and stuff. Um, if you uh, have any questions and you happen to miss the stream or you're watching this back pre-recorded, you can always tweet or you can send me messages on Facebook if you don't want people to know what your name is. Uh, on Green Acres Pest Control is my Facebook page and my uh, YouTube is Green Acres PC. I mean, not YouTube, my... Uh, Twitter is Green Acres PC and it's Acres spelled A K E R S. So, if uh, if you ever you know watch this through and think, well, I wonder how I can ask him a question. That's one of the best ways to get a hold of me. Oh, here's an article on PCT Magazine. I was looking for that thing. And if uh, if you do happen to actually have any questions, and it's something that involves more of a detailed answer then I'll actually make a video for you and I'll post it on. I've had people that have done that before. They've asked me if they could, if I could actually do a video about this, that, or the other. That's where my cockroach ser uh, series came in that I wrote back uh, a while back. Um, the Actually, the very last Cockroach uh, Monday video that I did actually came from a question from a person that watches my video, from a viewer that watches my videos. So if you do have a question and it involves a more, you know, an involved answer that I can't answer in, you know, three or four minutes, then I'll put a, uh, a video up for you specifically on my channel. So, um, what did you read about on PCT I, Magazine? I was looking for the stupid pesticide that... We, One thing we about Pest Control Technician Magazine is most of it's just trying to sell you something. Well, they were talking about diatomaceous earth and that while diatomaceous earth worked well in lab studies it was disappointing in fields yeah that's right and like 
that's one thing we get a lot is everybody's like, well, it works in lab studies. And it's like dietitians Earth or heat treatments. And they always say it works good in Well, Well, th- the thing is, everything works really well in lab study when you don't have people involved. Every time you add something, in, when you go to the field, all right, and you're using a pesticide in the field, I don't care what the lab results are. What, what really matters is field study. Because if, and even field study is controlled. Right. All right. The only field study that I trust, and this is, and this is just my personal advice to any exterminator, is your wife, your secretary, she seems knowledgeable. Now, my wife is a brainiac. She's real smart. She's the brains of our operation. It, I married her because she's smart. She married me because she's not smart. But I married her because she's smart. So anyway, um, no, but this is the thing about, all right, people use diatomaceous earth. People swear by diatomaceous earth. And they're like, oh, well, the lab studies are so great. They work. They work. They're really great. But a lab is a controlled environment. And so you're going to, uh, you're going to, you're not going to have people. You're not going to have dogs. You're not going to have cats. You're not going to have all these different things that stir the dust up. You're not going to have people that are improperly, uh, they're not properly applying the dust. It'll be caked up like nasty piles of nothing's going to crawl through that. Um, and I have found that when it's really thickly applied, it won't even kill bugs. Um, the point of diatomaceous earth is it needs to be applied so thin that the bugs don't realize it's there and they crawl through it and it kills them that way. So, yeah, and it works in lab, but like I said, when it's actually applied in the field, it's not that successful. You still need pesticide residual. Um, even your pesticides, a lot of pesticides that they do uh, lab studies on aren't as successful when you apply them in the field. When you're actually in somebody's house, using it in their house, there are a lot of things that, that uh, you know, that, that you have to factor in that aren't there in a lab, like people, uh, cleaners, bleach. You know, I, I had a customer for six months that had ants. They had one of the worst ant-infested houses I've ever been in in my life. Come to find out, every single time that I would spray his house, he would go behind me with bleach because he cleaned his house with bleach. And I tried to explain to him, you cannot clean behind me with bleach. You're going to clean up all the pesticide that's just been applied. You're going to clean it all up because bleach reacts with pesticides and it causes the pesticide to no longer be effective. So, you know, those are things you have to understand. People screw up pesticides all the time. Um, let's see. D says, this is my first live stream with you and your family. Happy I finally made it. I'm at work. Wi-Fi sucks, but I love being here. Oh, well, I won't tell your boss. Um, Hebe says, I dust around plants for non-systematic control of squash beetles on my garden, and it's under attack, but it needs to be applied too often for commercial use. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's right. And that's that's the thing about diatomaceous earth is people will say, like on my videos where I bash it, and I try to tell people it's not the end-all solution. You need... Diatomaceous earth is not bad. It's just not that effective. You need to use other things with it. It's like it's like tea without sugar. You know, yeah, it it's still nice, but it'd be better with with sugar in it because I like sweet tea. <laughs> That's not a very no, good we're analogy. Like a glass of water. You want sweet tea and they put sugar in it. That's not sweet tea. That's just water with sugar in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's like McDonald's sweet tea. It's just water with sugar in it. <laughs> no, but anyway, I don't know. The thing is, it's it's just you need. All right. You can't build a house without all of your tools. You know, you got your hammer. You've got. Uh, you know, you may need a nail hammer. You may need a, uh, like an impact hammer. You may need a, uh, you know, an extra set of hands. You're going to need your power saws. You're going to need levels. And yeah, you can build a house without a level, but is it going to be a good house? You know, you want everything to be square, plumb, and level. 
And if you're going to do a bed bug job, you need all the tools in order to be successful, in order for it to be successful. And while diatomaceous earth is a good tool by itself, it's not effective. It's not the end all solution. You need something other than diatomaceous earth to do the job. And, and then if you add all the tools together, then you have a really successful bed bug job and you can do a really good job that way. So I don't advise using just diatomaceous earth. Emma, you are not going to play any video games. You going to let her play video games? Yeah, I can let her. She's just being well, good. All right. As long as she's not making a bunch of noise. I'm sorry, guys. This is a really... Um, this, this, this is an extremely candid stream. I know. Well, I mean, we're out of town because your boy's going to a dive meet tomorrow. We're yeah. family. So... I actually think I'm going to have to get off here. I hate to do it. I got 10 people watching right now. I want to answer some questions, but, uh, oh, have any more questions? I mean, if anybody has any more questions, I'd love to answer your questions before I go to bed. Got to get up early, take my son to dive. He does a, a junior Olympic dive. So I've got to take him in the morning. Oh, we're just with family. We're up in DC, Greg. I've got family that lives up in DC. He's got to go to Maryland. In the morning, we're about 20 minutes away from where he's got to do a, a dive. He dives with uh, Liberty University. He's on their junior Olympic dive team, and so he's uh, he's doing these competitions in order to qualify. And so now we're up here and getting ready to go into Maryland tomorrow morning, and he's got to do he he dives the uh, one meter. He's doing the one meter. Yeah, he's junior Olympic on the one meter. He's novice three meter, but he's a, a junior Olympic on the one meter. So he's he's thirteen. So he's he's going to be doing that tomorrow morning. We got to take him to do that. But yeah, and then we get to North Aaron Carolina says he's in month. Maryland. Yeah, we got to go to uh, Chapel Hill next month down in North Carolina. So we're going to be all over the place the next couple months. Maybe we'll stay in some bed bug infested hotels and show you what it's <laughs> and like. If he qualifies, we're going to be all over. <laughs> oh yeah, if he qualifies, we're going to be all over the place. Hopefully, he won't qualify. <laughs> that I mean, awful? that sounds awful, don't it? I hope my son doesn't qualify, so I don't have to drive and fly all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia. That's one that's place I remember. Finals. Yeah, that's yeah. the finals are in Atlanta. I don't. I don't really want to go to Atlanta. Oh, I don't want to go to Atlanta. <laughs> so, all right. Well, if you guys don't have any questions or anything, I'm going to get on off of here. I got to run use the bathroom anyway. Oh boy, Aaron says there's a whole lot of bed bug hotels up in Maryland. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> it's that, we've gotten a lot of calls from Maryland. Yeah, we do. We get a, we do get a lot of calls in Maryland because we're listed. I'm listed in Northern Virginia. I'm listed in uh, as far as like the internet goes. I'm listed in Northern Virginia. I'm listed in. Uh, I've got two two listings in Northern Virginia. One up here near DC. Uh, one over in out in Winchester, out towards West Virginia border. I've got uh, one down in near Roanoke, and I've got another one over in Charlottesville. And oh, actually five, and one in Lynchburg. So I'm I'm all over the place, and I get a lot of calls out of Maryland because they think I'm. I mean, I don't have a reciprocal license, so I can't treat in Maryland. But I get a lot of calls out of Maryland because of um, my listing up here in D.C. So it's not D.C. exactly because I'm not label, I'm not licensed to treat in D.C. either. Um, just along the border, like you know Arlington, um, well, you know true. Falls Church, Woodbridge. Woodbridge, areas like that. I can treat. But I can't go actually into DC and treat it all. We've talked about it. But yeah, we've talked about it. But they charge too much. DC is outrageous expensive on their licensing and all the different things you have to go through to get licensed to treat in DC. I just figure I just just let them have the bugs. I don't need to do that. I'm I've, I'm stretched thin enough as it is. So, all right, guys, I'm gonna head on to bed. I gotta go use the bathroom and get my teeth brushed and try to get to bed. Got a lot to do tomorrow. Um, like I said, if you if you have any questions, you, you're welcome to send me some tweets over on Twitter at GreenAcresPC. It's A-K-E-R-S. You guys really have a great night. Appreciate it. Oh, this is not so bad. Ooh, wow, I'm live. Are you still live? I am. That's hilarious. What is happening? You here? always have issues. How do I turn this thing off? <laughs> Sorry.